Houston, Texas, White Oak. What's going on? Let's fucking go. You guys are pumped. All right. Without any further ado, let's bring out our guests for this evening. Hosts of the number one Texas-based comedy podcast, Pendejo Time. It's our friends Jake and Thomas. Boys, come on out. Yo. How are we doing? All right. Well, uh, Houston, Texas, we have, a, we have a little bit of a sort of like a, a legal business issue we need to uh, wrap up here before we leave the state of Texas. You know, we've been here a week. We've been doing shows. We've been making money in the state of Texas. So there's just something we need to do to make sure we don't get in any trouble with the authorities. So, Felix? Yeah. No, guys, this is just like, if you'll bear with us, this is just housekeeping. This is like, it's dirty, but like every company has to do it. We have to do this to like continue operating in the state and hopefully come back this day. But I will need everyone on stage to join me in reciting the Texas-mandated anti-BDS Pledge of Allegiance to Israel. Let's go. All right, guys. Can you please stand? Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you, I'm Chris, sorry. Chris, can you play the anthem? Yes. All right. Before an app is funded in angel investing round. Before an app is funded in angel investing round. Before a link is found between regular shorts and pants. Before a link is found before regular shorts and pants. Before Jonathan Pollard's heroic quest. Before Jonathan Pollard's heroic quest. Before a collab with Jonathan Van Ness. <laughs> a rose blooms in the desert. I pledge allegiance to the state of Israel. I pledge allegiance to the state of Israel. Even if I come down from Mali. Even if I, I come, come down, down from Mali. Mali. Even if my restaurant doesn't combine a custom pizza experience with a hip hop club atmosphere. Even if my restaurant doesn't combine a custom pizza experience with a hip hop club atmosphere. Even if my skin burns, my cataracts worsen, and my mom has me when she is 40, I will not waver. Let's build that third temple. Let's build that third Let's temple. Let's build that third right. temple. Okay. All right. Thank you guys for your patience. That's, that's all. We just needed to do that. We don't to want to get in trouble, operating. so yeah, we had no. to cross our I's, dot our T's, and star our bars on that yeah, one. Yeah. No, like, we want to come back here, but we, we got to do that. Sorry. Yeah. You have to be very careful, you know. You ever know who's watching. Yeah. Well, uh, Thomas and Jake, thanks. thank you guys so much for being here tonight. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Let's give another round of applause for uh, Pendejo time, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. I just, uh, I wanted to share with you guys uh, a, little, a little Texas uh, anecdote from um, exiting the city of Dallas the other day. I thought you might appreciate it. So on our way, on, on the road to Houston, we stopped at the famous uh, Fuel City gas station in Dallas because we wanted to see their beautiful longhorn steers. Wonderful, wonderful beasts. So we pull up to get gas, and I, I walk to the back where they have the, all, all the steers. And I'm looking at these guys, and they look, they're fantastic. So those... those they're, they're not fucking around. Those horns are long as hell. <laughs> it's like you, you hear like, oh, yeah, longhorn. Yeah, I get that. And then you see what's like, fuck. Well, I, I it's saw like they're so long. It's like you could tell like halfway through like the horn just doesn't know what to do anymore. It's like, oh, all right, buddy. All right. If you want this to keep going, just good luck because it just turns into a goddamn corkscrew. I, I could tell you all were truly captivated because you all post them on Instagram. <laughs> like, one after the other, I was like, I, mean, I see these, and you're like, oh, look at these fucking things, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, I walk back there, and I encounter uh, a, a, a married couple of which the, the wife I would describe as a, like, if Boomhauer were a 60-plus-year-old woman. And I, and I walk up, and I go, like, hey, how's it doing? And she goes, well, it's going to rain this week. And I go, excuse me? She says, it's going to rain for the rest of the week. And I said, oh, well, uh, thankfully, we're enjoying this nice weather outside. And there's these two huge steers just like at this fence looking at us. And I turn to her and I go, what do you think of these guys? And she goes, no, no cows. They probably want some pussy. <laughs> <laughs> you and me both, bro. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> So that was just a little bit of a, you know, I mean, those cows, like those steers, they did look like they wanted some pussy. I can't. They were well, on a dry they, spell. You, you, you simply exist to captivate guys from New York. So, you know, if you're trying to get some pussy, your most existence is just to be looked at and marveled at behind a gas station. <laughs> That's the worst type of torture, I would imagine. So. But, what did you say? They were like, 
the, the, the cattle in the state of Texas that are just basically allowed to wander around a pasture behind a gas station. Yeah, no, it's like being a cattle who is saved from extinction here is like, it's, they're like Adrian Brody and the pianist. <laughs> like the volume that they eat beef here, they're probably wondering like, why me? Why did I survive all this? The, uh, the tradition for a long time at UT was to have Bevo, their like main mascot, he would like come out to all the football games and be like, Woohoo! We got the damn Longhorn out here. And then after I guess he wore out his welcome, they would cook the motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like, imagine being the best guy at work, and then your boss comes up to you one day after five years, and you're like, we got to shoot you in your fucking head. <laughs> cook your ass up. You're done for. They, they, they do that with that bulldog at the University of Georgia, too. <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> that was also when Obama came to visit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I like uh, Felix's idea of Houston having evil swag because I do feel like Houston is Gotham but just with more catfish joints to eat at. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but like instead of Batman, it's just like a 5'8", 380-pound rig welder. Yeah. And it's a Batman who only works out his arms. Right. <laughs> and there's no Riddler or Joker. He just like throws his wife down the stairs or whatever. <laughs> Like, there, there's no villain to fight except, like, several domestic disputes per month, you know? I, uh, I, I grew up about 10, 50, well, I don't want to, 15, 20 minutes in a town called Pasadena, Texas. And uh, every time I come from, I, I grew up there, I moved to Austin. And every time I come back, it's like that part in Wizard of Oz where, this, where the world just gets black and white again. And that's no knock on Pasadena. It's a great town, but there is sort of like a sepia tone, and that's benzene cloud. That's what... It's, it's just sort of fumes. Everybody who cheered, by the way, the 20 or 25 people, plus me were the 26 people who did not die of lymphoma from Pasadena, Texas. Yeah, we got some real benzene heads. Now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, we are, we're talking about Houston, and like there's a, a, like there's a number of like downtown areas, and you said it's very one of the, weird. Yeah, there's like a number of different skylines here in Houston, and one of them you said was like the medical district where they have all the like the best hospitals in the country. Right, right. And you said it's like the best place in the world to get cancer. So, which is important because this is also the most likely place in the world right. to get cancer. So you're born basically at like a, like you get nerfed from birth. <laughs> You're like, you're going to get some sort of lymphoma or fucked up growth on your head. But as a plus, you sort of well, it's even... Keep, it's keeping the hat sizes too small around well, here. Well, it encourages you to grind and get your hustle on so you can afford fucking health care in the city. <laughs> so if you're like, well, if I do get some sort of terrible blood or brain cancer, I can at least go to the best fucking place on planet Earth to get blood or brain cancer, which is about 30 minutes from where I grew up. I don't want to shill for the healthcare community in Houston, by the way. I do. Thank you, heroes. <laughs> Medical goat. <Yeah. laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. All right, Houston. So uh, one of the things we've been doing on tour is basically treating our audiences like they were several hundred Hollywood producers. Because, you know, we're... we're you know, Chapo Mark V, we're trying to become Hollywood sickos, okay? Like, I can't, I can't lie. Ever since I was a kid, I wanted to be a Hollywood sicko. So part of that, part of that is ABP, always be pitching. And we're... <laughs> boo. <laughs> you paid for the ticket. Yeah, no. <laughs> You're fucked. I don't, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't care if you grew up in Pasadena or whatever. <laughs> to, to, to me, you're a 70-year-old man named Merv who yeah. can get my movie made. Yeah. So on the first leg of our Southern Tour, we did our Justified Spec script starring the Trillbillies and Walton Goggins. So, and then we did the, uh, the, the Andrew Cuomo, the Andrew Cuomo's <laughs> Daughter's Meatballs. Uh, Daughter's Meatballs film. And we've got a new one for you here tonight. But this one is about, like, this is a little bit different. This is like a, this is a different genre of film. It's one that we're very interested in, but it's one that we have yet to make a foray into. So to that end, I'm turning it over to the script wizard, Felix Biederman. <laughs> I want to uh, want to thank you for having us. I know your time is valuable. Uh, thank you for circling back. Uh, what we have today is a very exciting project. This is the first media property we have ever produced that we have ever scripted. 
where deucing, the act of two brothers fucking one woman, is not featured. <laughs> but bear with me, because this is an exciting and new challenge. We are embarking on a type of film we have never made before. A Christian, specifically evangelical film. There is gold in them, our hills. That's right. That's right. Films like The Reliant, Assassin's 32 AD. Films that feature characters such as the Benham Brothers. <laughs> Who are the Benham Brothers, people asked when they saw the hit film The Reliant. Well, it turned out they were minor league baseball players turned HGTV hosts who were fired for homophobia. <laughs> but regardless of how you met these brothers, how they came into your life, how these twins captivated you, whether you already knew them or you knew them through us, you were like, I, I want to see more of them. That's what we all felt. So why not write a movie around them? Why not... Why not Take that element that makes them special, their, their twinness, and make it the cornerstone on which we build a media empire, potentially? I bring to you the secret uncles. I just want to, Large Sunge Pictures presents the story of a son who must learn to become a nephew. <laughs> I, it's I, the most important journey any son must go through in life. At the Dallas show, I hadn't seen that poster before, and I turned around and read it, and I was like, yeah, yeah. It's the most, yeah. <laughs> so, Benham Twins, they are, I mean, if you had to guess it, uh, you're not a real executive. They're obviously going to be our uncles, right? But they're special uncles. They're uncles that our protagonist, Noah, Noah uh, Jewish last name... That we're working Weintraub. on. No, Weintraub. 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 Yeah, Weintraub. He's uh, not actually Jewish. His parents just right, want no, him to yeah. be Jewish. Yeah. <laughs> That's dad, the bit. Yeah, his, his uh, dad, played by Kevin Sorbo, converted to Judaism, took his wife's last name, and got circumcised at age 36. Yeah. Um, but back to Noah. Noah is our, our hero. He's the 17 year old in the family. The family has tried to stage manage him into being sort of a Greta Thunberg type. Uh, and he wants to, you know, he has his, his own... His parents are sicko lips at the end of and, and And he doesn't want to be a sicko lip. No, he doesn't. He doesn't, but it's, you know, he doesn't want to rebel against his parents, make them sad. He secretly, like, in his heart of hearts, he wants, to, like, business major, like, major in HVAC. But he's going to Oberlin till he meets his uncles. But who is our hero Noah played by but another hero of conservative media, Firebrand Daily Wire podcast host and actor Michael Knowles. Uh, if we could see some of his uh, acting. Wait, it's a beauty, beauty. Shit. What the fuck, Nicole? It's not what you think. Not what I think? Are you fucking your brother? No! What? Oh, I like it when you're rough with me, pretty lady. Hmm? <laughs> you asshole! Guys, quit it! This is some serious shit! You're fucking right, it's serious shit! God, I think you broke my nose! I'm gonna do fucking worse than that! What are you gonna say? I hit you because you have an incest with your sister! I'm adopted, remember? <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the new, like, Pornhub intro, are you having incest with your sister? <laughs> I love the idea of casting uh, Michael Knowles as a 17-year-old in this movie. It was sort of like when I said I was watching Nickelodeon when the Twin Towers fell down. <laughs> this was ground pioneered this year by Dear Evan Hansen, which was breaking uh, you know, new frontiers and having 35-year-olds playing 16-year-olds, and it's proved that it's possible. Well, yeah, Euphoria is a huge fucking show. Absolutely. Unlike any of those shitty actors you just mentioned, uh, <laughs> what Michael Knowles lacks in looking convincingly 17, he makes up for in a young Brando type intensity that will carry this film. Young Brandon. Yes. <laughs> Let's go, young Brandon. <laughs> Uh, before we jump into this, let's uh, see the rest of our cast up here. Um, Kevin Sorbo is the dad, obviously. Um, the, the mom Kim, will be Kim Richards. Kim Richards from Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and Escape from Witch Mountain. 
uh, Jamie Kennedy will be reprising his, his roles in Christian cinema, playing a character named Dr. Jeffrey Epstein, no relation. <laughs> the Kent State Gun Girl will play a girlfriend character. And Lil Boozy will retain a role as a sort of Greek chorus. There, there was a moment in the Dallas show we were all like, who gets to be Lil Boozy? <laughs> <laughs> who gets to do it? <laughs> It was me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Will ultimately was like, I'll take it. I got it. So, uh, you know, we have the outlines of this entire script, uh, and we, we've, we've written four scenes that we're going to do a table read for you. Uh, but I think now is as good a good time as any to jump into the world of the secret uncles. All right. So first act, we're, we're, we're seeing what's going on with the wine traps. You go into their house, you know what's going on, Okay. They have the spongy, terrible type of wheat bread. They got the peanut butter you need to stir. They, they've never seen a disposable cake up in their life. It's that type of kitchen. They got to flush at least four times. Yeah. Every time they go to the bathroom. Low flow toilets. And you, you immediately notice the look of the film. It looks very uh, like prestige TV, that type of, that type of grain. You know, you, know you, you keep that in your mind. But anyway, we're seeing what's going on with the wine drops. They're having a college acceptance party because... Noah has just gotten accepted into Oberlin on an infographic scholarship. <laughs> They're drinking Chilean wine. They're listening to their favorite episodes of uh, Fresh Air with Terry Gross. And uh, Noah's friend Seth is there. And uh, Noah's mom is like, your boyfriend's here. Uh, do you want us to like, give you condoms so you can go uh, to your room and have sex with him? <laughs> and he's like, I'm, I'm not gay. I like... But, you know, he loves his parents, though, and he's not going to, like, explode at them. They have, a, they have a bowl full of poppers, and if you take one, no one's checking the level. It's just no questions asked. Just do the poppers, but leave your keys in the bowl at the door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the mom keeps pushing, and eventually he just, he's, he's like, storms up to his room. But who is waiting for him in that room? A magical set of uncles. Very Robert Blake and Lost Highway. These two uncles. He turns around and they're there. They're right there. And he goes, what, what, who are you? And they go, boy, we're, we're, we're your uncles that you never knew about. But believe me, you've always been our nephew. Imagine he, like any of your real uncles, anyone in this room who like has worked in oil and gas for 50 years, but <laughs> insists on telling you about their p opinions on the entire world every holiday season. <laughs> so these uncles are like, Noah, how about we take you to a real party? <laughs> And wouldn't you know it, they're taking him to the Bass Pro Pyramid. <laughs> to see Mike Huckabee's white deaf comedy jam. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the acts there are as you would predict. There's a guy in a barrel of suspenders like playing a banjo. There's uh, Jeff Dunham with his wonderful ethnic puppets. <laughs> Even Ron White. And Noah is... He, he can't believe this. You know, he's only ever seen Dear White People in the net. He's only seen things like that. He's never seen a real comedy like this. He's rolling, on the, uh, rolling in the aisles, dying. The uncles go up. They do their gross twin vaudeville bullshit that you re recognize from The Reliant. They kill. And... Noah gets his first glimpse at a world he's never been allowed into. But it doesn't stop there. The next day, the uncles show up magically once again. They're going to take him to play a game of pickup basketball. And that brings us to the first scene we have written, the pickup basketball scene. I think it's very obvious that uh, Thomas and Jake are well-suited to play the twin uncles. Uh, you know, Gaffin, Gaffin Buck and Sergeant Braxton Bragg Buck. <laughs> That's the real name of the family, by the way, the Bucks. Um, it's also our no relation. It's also, yeah, it's all, our, we changed our names legally after these shows. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I can play Noah, and then there is a, a spectator who is Little Boozy. I will reprise the role of Little Boozy. <laughs> all right. I will read the same direction. The twin uncles and Noah are standing in front of the court. Noah turns to Braxton and Gavin. What did you bring me here for? To take you to school. Today's lesson 
the spirit of competition. Well, we, we usually say land acknowledgments before classes. You'll have plenty of time to acknowledge the land after we break some ankles. Gaffin passes the ball to Noah, beginning our montage. The uncles are utterly dominating their 17-year-old naf- nephew, boxing him out, beasting him when he tries to play defense, and getting the sweetest layups you've ever seen a white boy put up. <laughs> Noah is exhausted, resting his palms on his thighs, barely upright. <sighs> Let me catch my breath. Oh, I'm so tired. Finish what you start, Noah. <laughs> Don't finish too quick, like this guy. Braxton Jeff- gestures to Gaffin. They call my brother the fire marshal. Because every time he's at a singles bar, all the ladies start finding out real fast if all the exits work. (laughs) And then the uh, spectator watching from the the sideline says, These white boys got sauce like Pistol Pete and banter like vaudeville. The montage resumes. The uncles run roughshod on poor Noah, finishing the game with some juicy alley-oops and the best passing you've ever seen. Now sitting in the stands, Noah is exhausted, drinking a Gatorade. This is such a crazy feeling. It's just atrophy. Right now you're in the two-hour muscle recovery window. No, I mean, I mean I, I've been told I've lost before. Or I've never been told I've lost before. Every game I've ever played in school and, and stuff like that, they told us that recording scores has roots in white supremacy and would give us anxiety. So I, I never really knew what it was like to lose. Like, I've had games where I thought I did okay, or maybe I thought I didn't, but I, I've never really lost. I was just sitting with you. It's dope. <laughs> not, not how I didn't do enough to win, but just, like, now there's this whole-ass point to the game. And for the first time, I can start thinking about what I need to do better. The uncles nod knowingly at each other, satisfied that they've taught another lesson. Yeah, like, I would ask our principal if we could... Just have one game where we recorded the scores like in the NBA once, and the uncle's demeanors change. Well, they may as not well record scores neither. What do you mean? That the nonstop bullshit association is totally fixed. It's basically pro wrestling nowadays. Them boys relegate any white player with passing ability to the European leagues. (laughs) They want every team to look like a goddamn rap video. And even if you're a Muslim, they'll kick you out if you don't bow down to China. Hell, they'll find you. Unless you're pledging allegiance to the Chinese flag for every game. And shooting dice at halftime. <laughs> and it's basically run by La China now. Who? La fraud. La bitch. La fake injury. La Obama. La defund the police. La Brandon. La Black Lives Matter. La ruin the league shames. This just goes on and on until the sun goes down. (laughs) Scene. (laughs) So we are we are we are well into our plot. Uh, Noah is you know he he's diving headfirst into the world of his uncles. We see a (laughs) montage of him learning skills. You know the thing where. Starts out, he's maybe not so good at it. By the end of the montage, he's amazing. And, you know, these skills include hunting, fishing, uh, cleaning a gun, uh, most importantly, filming your disputes with cashiers (laughs) and filming yourself in a car afterwards. And this uh, ends with a very satisfying, now director's trademark type scene of uh, a nine-minute uncut scene of Noah and his uncle smoking cigars. Uh, this sort of, this leads into conflict with his family, though. And you can tell that Noah is sort of alienated from his parents a bit because he starts wearing a young conservatives-type suit. But, you know, he, it, it hasn't really hit him yet because he, he's riding high. He's got a girlfriend. His videos are getting praised by the likes of Dan Bongino online. They, they've never seen a kid yell at cashiers like this. And something strange is happening in the household. That grainy, uh, you know, euphoria or yellow jacket style tone, it's gone. It's replaced with a Hallmark style of smoothness. And not that, just... toi- that toilet that took four flushes, uh, one flush, one dump now. There we go. That peanut butter, it's no longer in the refrigerator. It's Jif, and you don't have to stir it. <laughs> these, these elements of magical realism. 
But they're not done. Sunday. The uncles have another trip for him. Noah thinks, oh my God, we're going to football? My parents never let me watch that. No, even better. They go to church. And they, in fact, go to a mega church that looks like most of the venues we have played on this tour. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, Noah's confused. He's looking up at the pastor and he's like, oh, that canter is dressed weird because he's, <laughs> you know, wearing like uh, uh, chrome heart jeans like most pastors <laughs> in, the, in this state. <laughs> But, you know, after an initial confusion, it, it's great. He's, uh, you know, it works so well, the love of Jesus Christ, that Noah throws his Wellbutrin in the trash on his way out. <laughs> he doesn't need it anymore. Uh, we are deeper into the magical realism. Back in the household, conflicts between Noah and his parents. The dad's foreskin grows back. This is a big scene. <laughs> You know, and the de uh, Kevin Sorbo, he's, you know, kind of the good parent in this. Um, you know, he's like, ah, I love how this Jif tastes and this, like, Natty Ice is great. I don't have to drink, like, a chilled red wine anymore. But, you know, calm before the storm, his parents have to step in. The mom is pissed, uh, which brings us to scene two, uh, the, gay, the uh, straight conversion. Uh, the, the characters in the scene are Noah, uh, David, the dad, Kevin I'll, Sorbo. Are we playing him? Mm -hmm. I think Will should play Noah. Uh, Rebecca, the mom, that is up for grabs. We have uh, Dr. Jeffrey Epstein. I will play him. <laughs> uh, and then there, there's also a Jonathan Van Ness role, but it's only one line. We can cross that bridge when we get to it. That's Thomas. I got it. He's got it. <laughs> and Shay can be the mom then. Yeah. yeah. Noah and his parents are sitting in a room filled with framed photos of DeRay McKenzie, McKinnison, Hannah Gadsby, and Sean Penn as Harvey Milk, but not actually any pictures of Harvey Milk. <laughs> there are posters written in that blocky Pinterest liberal front with affirmational phrases on them like, love is love, and there's no shame in needing help to find out who you really are. <laughs> parents David and Rebecca are seated close, closer together, far away from an angry and besuited Noah. A visibly Jewish man in a lab coat enters. All right, all right, new faces. That's always a mitzvah. I'm Dr. Jeffrey Epstein. What can radical acceptance family services do for you today? I can't imagine a couple as handsome as you would need our open relationship counseling, but <laughs> you never want to make assumptions. <laughs> it's our son, doctor. Just a few weeks ago, he was a happily gay boy. We had him signed up for a drag show that he was supposed to be performing at this past Saturday. Then something changed. Nothing changed. I'm still your son. This is who I've always been. I've just found the confidence to show you. Feelings of temporary heterosexuality are common in kids nearing major life events, Noah. Uh, how old are you? I'm 17. Oh, ripe age. It's a stressful one, though. I'm sure with college looming, there's a lot on your mind. Well, Noah got a full-ride scholarship to Oberlin to be on their infographic team. That's wonderful, but I I'm sure there are still many things that are stressing you out and maybe causing this change of behavior. <sighs> the only stress I'm having is my parents trying to make me something I'm not. My whole life they wanted me to be someone else. They took me to see Pet Shop Boys before I could walk. They have the password to my Insta and post stories about how I stand Charlie XCX. I don't stand her, Mom. I think she's fucking hot. I'm not giving anything or serving cunt, and I want to smash her. And Sydney Sweeney, and Sarah J. <laughs> Rebecca starts crying. <laughs> no, I apologize to your mother. No, Dad. This is who I am. If, if you were more like your brothers, maybe you could accept that I'm not your guy's little project and that I'm a real person. More like my brothers? Brax and Gaffin have taught me more about being myself than either of you have. David looks confused. Noah, I cannot tell that you're very upset, but we don't do anything here at Radical Acceptance that's forceful. We use the most advanced technology in our field to help kids become who they really are inside. And at the end of it, I promise you, no matter what, you're going to feel like yourself. Noah, he's promising you. If he breaks a promise, he has to wait all the way till Yom Kippur to make up for it. 
<laughs> Noah shrugs. <laughs> okay, fine. We'll try your thing. Dr. Epstein leads Noah into an adjoining room. He turns off the harsh office fluorescence and hits a remote. The room is now a sexy purplish pink. He directs Noah to a BOSU ball. Noah gets over and sits on the ball. Two prongs come out of the floor and rotate to put shackles on Noah's wrists. Wait, what is this? Why am I being restrained? At the same time, David and Rebecca are led to a room on the side where they're hidden by a one-way mirror. What is this? I thought they just showed him a video. It's a medical procedure, David. It's safe. Janice from my book club told me all about it. Dr. Epstein puts completely black goggles on and walks over to Noah with a large syringe. This is just going to pinch a little bit. He rolls up Noah's sleeve and sticks the needle in. Ow! What the hell was in that? It's just uh, Red Bull, vodka, mint jewel, nicotine salt, and a little molly. It's going to keep you nice and relaxed and a little alert, and this will be over before you know it. Lady Gaga, born this way, starts playing as a screen descends from the ceiling. The screen turns on. It's JVN from Queer, Queer Eye appears in front of a desk at a dark background. Hey, lovelies. <laughs> if you're seeing this video, it's because someone loves you very, very, very much. They love you so much that they want to use state-of-the-art technology and compassion to help you remember who you really are. So sit back, put on your best joggers, slap on a mud mask, and try to forget, you know, the, kind of the past, you know, like two years. Scratch that since 2016. And have fun. The video starts slow with the infographic-style still images and phrases like, Queer Friendsgiving with Chosen Family is a vibe. And protect Doug Emhoff at all costs. <laughs> and bubbly limb faceless humanoid illustrations fly across the screen. As the song speeds up, the anamorphous uh, infographic blobs transform into sexy Tom of Finland drawings. <laughs> Those give way to rapid montage of clips from The Good Wife, Nanette, the Hillary episode of Broad City, Glee, the weird dance Kamala did at the Pride Parade, etc. <laughs> Noah squirms and tries to close his eyes, but the molly from the injection forces them open. <laughs> Behind the glass, David looks horrified as Rebecca watches sternly. He's in pain, Rebecca! Oh, so you know better than the doctors now, David? Noah clearly is in pain. David starts pounding the glass. Stop! Stop this! Get my son off that bosu ball! Dr. Epstein sighs. He dejectedly hits a switch, and everything in the room goes back to normal. What are you doing, David? It was working. Unfortunately, Ms. Weintraub, we have to stop if a parent instructs us to. Despite the nuclear family being the biggest obstacle to child liberation, the law is the law. Dr. Epstein hits the remote, and Noah's restraints retract back into the floor and desk. Noah bolts to the door. Noah, come back! You would never be my chosen family. I never want to see you again. He runs out and slams the door. Great work putting your fragility on display, David. <laughs> <laughs> I want our son back just as bad as you, but I'm not going to let them put our boy in shackles and ball gags. This isn't it, Rebecca. This is so not it. You know what? Why don't you find your own way home, David? That's a great idea. Actually, forget that. I'm sleeping in my office tonight. David storms out. There's a stony silence in the room. <clears throat> so uh, that's still uh, $23,495.95. Uh, your insurance, unfortunately, is not in our network, but we do have financing options at just 32.5% APR. See. It seems like the, the surgery that happened there is like the reverse version of what, the, what Marvel did to the dude... Uh, What's his name? He was in oh, the Eternals. Oh, Camille Nanjani? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like the reverse version of like the Marvel chatification surgery that they give to like, like Chris Pratt and Camille Nanjiani. Where they do, you know, they just turn, yeah, I would love... Camille Nanjiani or, as he's known in the Eternals, Kingo. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I, Look, I, I, I'm going to keep it a buck. The only reason I got into podcasting is to get the Kumail surgery. <laughs> like, I... Like, I've tried the gym. I've tried that shit. It's not working out. I just want to come out of a door one day and be like 6'4", yoked as shit. Like, I don't want to fucking go. I don't want to do this shit no more. 
the then, you have to go on, <laughs> then you have to go on Instagram and, and complain about how traumatizing it right. is. Right. I have. Yeah. I have to. Get it I, both ways. I have to peddle like Chinese research chemicals to nineteen-year-olds and shit. Like all that. You know. This is how you. <laughs> whew, this is how you get yoked like me. I want my jaw to weigh 20 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> the picture of him, like, at, at Thanksgiving, just, like, clenching the knife, looking like he's going to shatter it. Yeah. Man, that's so sick. All of the pictures that they did for the photo shoot post the trend balone deck of ball and stack that, that Disney, <laughs> like, funneled. He's, like, in a small British car, and he's, like, reaching for a jewel, but he's, like, <laughs> he's, like, doing the Arnold thing, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Back to the pitch. Uh, sorry, Merv, the executive. I'm sorry, talking Merv. To. Yeah, uh, I really want to be ripped like Kumail. I, yeah, got, no. I got carried away. You know, after after we get this made. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So back to our story. You know, drama notwithstanding, Noah has learned from his uncle so well that his videos are now going viral. They're getting millions of views. <laughs> All right, yeah. It's got a fan of metrics over there. Um, but one day... He makes the wrong video, chooses the wrong target. He sees a postal worker. And unfortunately, this is the two-month period in 2020 when everyone who's annoying was like, I stand the post office. It gives cunt. <laughs> I, 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 I buy in stamps for solidarity with the post. Yeah. Does everybody remember that? Yeah. That was a thing. You were a good person if you bought stamps. Yeah. I like the idea of somebody making like $13 an hour and some college student walking up and be like, you're serving pussy right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, I noticed, like, you, you put your whole pussy into my mailbox. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my P.O. box fucking stinks. Dude. I apologize. <laughs> this isn't a, a side, but like, I, I've observed this now. Is a serving cunt good? Because it doesn't sound good. <laughs> Was yeah, it doesn't good. sound positive. I asked my okay here. I asked my girlfriend that question, and she sat me down like when my parents gave me the sex talk. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, "To serve cunt is you know to serve a tight." And I was like, "I don't give a fuck really, like all that much." <laughs> I got a raccoon head on. I'm serving cunt, motherfucker. <laughs> well, Noah has gone from serving cunt in the conservative blogosphere to being the cunt who is served <laughs> because. He's now gone viral in a bad way. He's condemned on MSNBC, on blogs, uh, TikTok, everywhere for demanding a postal worker take off his mask, which usually worked on cashiers. Uh, everything that was given to him is now falling away. His girlfriend leaves him. His admission to Oberlin is taken away from him. He's condemned. He's alone. He feels terrible. And he's back in the bedroom where he met his uncles. And they're there with him. Uh, Will, I think uh, I like what you did with the Noah character. And Thank you. Uh, obviously, um, Thomas, and, Thomas and Jake, uh, you know, Gavin and Braxton again. Let's go. Uh, let's do it. Noah is sitting in his room post-cancellation with his uncles. He's beside himself. I can't believe this. I'm being condemned on Mike.com, Daily Dot, and even Persuasion. They brought me up as an example of a conservative they think goes too far. Noah, it's not all sunshine and rainbows out there, boy. You're going to pay a price for standing up to the media, cashiers in hell, even janitors. Yeah, if there's any rainbows, they're coming from my brother over here. <laughs> uh, you hear this guy, you'd think he was the one born 11 seconds earlier and not the one who's later to everything. Ooh! Oh, that was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. Can you, can you stop doing banter? My life is ruined. I'm exactly where I was when I met you guys. Actually, it's worse. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to go to college anymore. What do you need college for? You're a man now, Noah. And hell, you're somebody's nephew. <laughs> I'm a man, I'm a man, my heart's broken, I have no future, nobody wants to be seen with me, Chuck Windig called me a fuck trollic shit goblin, <laughs> I was going to go into the military after college, but now I can't even enlist in the woke army after what everyone said about me. Boy, let me tell you something, God always finds a way. I wish he found a way to make it so I was never born. Hey! Hey! <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
Don't you talk about your precious gift of life like that. I know plenty of guys who paid the ultimate price for this country. Believe me. And they'd love to be where you're at. Then try, okay. Then try this on for size. I wish I was never anyone's nephew. <gasps> Fuck! Fuck! <laughs> Braxton and Gaffin look ashen. A silence sets over the room. Just leave me alone. Let me be a loser in peace. Noah turns around to open his MacBook. Right after turning it on, he looks back to see where his, un his uncles are getting up. But they're already gone. <laughs> Scene. I think the secret to being a good uncle or dad is to disappear like Batman. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like my dad. I'm just kidding. That's bad. <laughs> I'm still thinking about the rig welder Batman being like, where are my Hummer keys? <laughs> <laughs> where did I leave the leftovers last night? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't tell me I'm too drunk to drive. <laughs> I got better when I've had a few. What is my son's name? <laughs> Sorry, I pushed my wife into the pool too hard. Like, <laughs> I, think, I think Texas Batman is the next thing they have to pursue. Yeah. There's, uh, well, it's got to get grittier and grittier. And so they went, they went gritty with Bale. They went like emo with Pattinson. The next thing is like, Oil and gas, like rig welder Batman. It's, it's, it's a, a Batman who doesn't punch the mentally ill. He runs people over with his truck. Yeah. That's it. He literally, he never gets out of his fucking I'm truck. Joker is on the side of the... Joker's on the side of the 610 loop, and he just coal rolls across the whole fucking... <laughs> <laughs> you like, think drunk driving is your ass? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was born in... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to imagine the Batmobile is like a 10-foot tall dually <laughs> with like one of those Calvin pissing on Obama's head bumper stickers, you know? He has to step on like Alfred's shoulders to get up in yeah. there. 5'7", like. <laughs> rig welder, South Texas yeah. Batman. <laughs> he, it's sitting on 42-inch American forces and it, yeah. like, it, it's all blacked out except for the rims. It's right, not really yeah. At all. <laughs> the truck monthly payment is $955. <laughs> Alfred. How the fuck do I afford this with six child support payments? Goddamn. <laughs> Alfred is his gardener. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was going to say, like, the warehouse foreman, but, like, yeah, the gardener is much better. I will not do the voice. I have a job in real no, life. We, we're out. Uh, you can imagine the voice. You can imagine the voice in your own I'm head. I'm not sure what voice you're referring to. <laughs> Tom is like, please, I need more detail. I was just wondering. <laughs> so that, that's another exciting franchise we could get into if you option this. Exactly. Yeah. Like, well, you, you, can, you can option a whole slate of concepts, and this is just yeah. one of them. I don't know how many Mervs there are in Texas, specifically Houston, but hopefully we can get one. Yeah. Out of a crowd of about 500 of you, there's got to be one Merv. Yeah. Um, we all got that one Merv friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So Noah has banished his uncles. Now the magical realism is going away. You got to stir the peanut butter again. Dad's foreskin grows back. There. No, it uh, goes away. 50? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It goes, 50 it goes away. To yeah. 20 flushes per dump. <laughs> yep. Fun's over. Fun's over. It looks like prestige. It looks like in treatment now. He's back to take popping Wellbutrin, like M&M's. Yeah. Oh, so. my God, yeah. The whole house has euphoria lighting from the foyer <laughs> to, like, the, the bathroom area. Yeah, it's, it's a sad scene. But, you know, from Noah's parents' perspective, at least, there's a silver lining because Noah has taken his skills of making car videos and done the greatest apology ever, causing Oberlin to accept him back on the condition that he stay in their apology dorms that are for <laughs> freshmen who have committed acts similar to Noah uh, where there is no plumbing or electricity or heat and they have to wear clothes that are donated to the school by famous alumni, uh, Le Lena Dunham. <laughs> They've all got the, the, the hair of a dead dog on them somewhere. <laughs> 
<laughs> you guys should read about that if you haven't. It's a bad situation. They just keep giving them out. I don't know. What yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Viewer, this is one sad ballad that is not produced by Jack Antonoff. Yeah. <laughs> Noah's in the dorms. He's now just trying to be a normal college kid. He's trying to keep his head down, hit the books, and maybe put his life back together. But when you're somebody's nephew, you're not allowed to be normal. Trouble may follow you. One day during Zoom classes, uh, someone uh, like d does like a land acknowledgement or something wrong, and it causes an armed contingent of protesters to take over the school. Noah's ex-girlfriend is among the hostages. Noah is now faced with a choice. Should I use the skills that my now abandoned, denounced, d magically disappeared uncles taught me? Or should I go silently into the night? Yep. Well, you, you picked right, Merv. You picked... Thank you, Merv! Because that is, that is what he's going to try to do. But because he doesn't have the magic of his uncles, he falls short. And that leads us into our final written scene. Um, for this scene, scene four, uh, I think that Matt should be the Antifa goon yes, character. Yes, I am the Antifa goon. Yeah. I feel uh, like your Oscar bait performance yes. is, is yeah. right there, yeah. <laughs> this is in my reel. Um, you know, Braxton and Gavin, obviously, and Will, back as Noah, and Chris doing stage direction. <clears throat> Noah is kneeling with both his hands behind his head. An Antifa goon who got the jump on him due to his familiarity with OSHA-compliant building layouts, <laughs> has an SKS automatic, semi-automatic rifle pointed at the back of his head. Really normal to see a checks notes, ah yes, guy trying to be a hero during a peaceful protest. <laughs> I swear to you, I am not trying to get between you and whatever your goal you've got. I'm just trying to find someone really important to me. Well, I see the bad excuse maker has logged on, and he's got divorced guy energy. I, I swear I'm not. That's not my energy at all. I promise. Hold on. I feel like I know you from somewhere, or at least recognize your face, and not just in the way all white guys look the same to me. You, you, might, you must have me confused with somebody else. No, I recognize you. You're the take off your mask bro. This hits so different. The Horizontal Democratic Organizer Council is going to actually lose it. <laughs> On your feet! We're taking you to meet a dope bunch of folks who are doing amazing work. As Noah rises, he furrows his brow. He has to make a move. He turns around and reaches for the goon's rifle. He gets a hold of it, but only removes the poorly attached laser sight. <laughs> The goon smacks him with the butt of the rifle. Noah is knocked on his back, with the goon pointing the gun at his head. Not trying to be a hero, Noah. My mans gave up an opportunity to actually learn something from real organizers, but now you're just going to be part of a one-man die-in. Please, please, God, I'm somebody's nephew. Don't let it end like this. Bam! A loud shot rings from the rifle pier and pierces through the hallway. When Noah opens his eyes, he sees the uncles. Gaffin is holding the 7.62 round that was meant for Noah's skull. <laughs> what the literal fuck? <laughs> Before he can get, any more get out any more Twitter speak, Braxton rapidly slacks, slaps on some flexi tie handcuffs on the goon's wrist and throws him to the floor. Think you dropped this? Let me hand it back to you. <laughs> Just pulls the oh, So that happened. To the accountability to Amanda's skull. Look on the bright side, Buttercup. You're definitely still voting for Brandon again. <laughs> Wait, where did you guys come from? Did you catch a speeding bullet? How did you know where to find me? Well, now's as good a time as any. I suppose so, Gaffin. No, me and Braxton died in 2003. <laughs> While serving our country. You're dead? Our yeah. bodies died that day. 
but we've been watching over you since our little bro knocked up that pain in the you-know-what. We left one army that day, but we've been an even bigger one ever since. Noah, we're angels. We're angels. (laughs) We're fucking angels, Noah. Yeah. You ever seen some shit like this? Cool as fuck, honestly. (laughs) There you go. We getting our head of ourselves. We ain't there yet, Gavin. No, not even close. Better record this. (laughs) My brother's right for once. We're angels in training. When a good man dies, he goes to serve God Almighty. When a soldier dies, he becomes an angel. (laughs) But for uncles... They can't become full angels if their nephews are going to become soy men. (laughs) When our commanding officer, Archangel Michael, gave us our citrip on you, that became our duty. You're the most valuable strategic asset we've ever protected, Noah. That's a goddamn fact. How How is it that my dad never said anything about you guys? Or how you died in the war? Was it in Afghanistan, Iraq? Oh, shit, not exactly either of those. (laughs) There was a lethally oriented three-car pileup in Okinawa that we were involved in, and our Jeep became an improvised vehicular explosive device on account of grenades that nobody told us were in there. I mean, Noah, you know how it is. You're trying to order drinks, and it's all in there fucked up, weird writing. (laughs) Like, I'm supposed to be able to tell how strong something is because they got the one that looks like a house with some fucking lines through it. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck, shit. God damn it. I had Ah. too many of them fucked up house drinks. You combine that with a little bit of jet lag, boy, and the way they signal over there, however the fuck they do it. It's amazing it doesn't happen more, but it's neither here nor there. You're always going to be our nephew, Noah. And that would be true, even if we had survived that wreck. Like that lucky kid in the minivan. (laughs) Whether we're flesh and blood, or Lord, baby, Lord... Up in high heaven, Jesus, baby lords, NCOs. We're always going to be there for you. <laughs> but last I checked, you got a girl to save. Braxton tosses Noah an M1911. M1911? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Is that okay. the right way to it's say a, that? It's a pistol. Okay. <laughs> M1911. To... Now go show these sons of bitches what your uncles taught you. <laughs> Scene. So, before we, uh, before we wrap this up, uh, Merv, we think this is a strong point. We have a very complicated and self-contradictory lore about how angels work in this movie <laughs> and how they need to get a heaven challenge coin, and we think there is a huge secondary market for this media property and eternal buzz, the best kind, made by losers making YouTube videos explaining the lore of Secret Uncles and the Angel Extended Universe. But, you know, before we get ahead of ourselves, let's wrap this up. There is, of course, director's trademark, 20-minute-long raid-style single-shot action sequence of Noah taking back Oberlin and killing about 300 people, I would say. Imagine John Wick, but at the end, it's a Hillary Clinton ad. That's basically... <laughs> and the initial budget for this movie is only $2.5 million, but the, the single-shot action sequence costs another $20 million. Right. Because yeah. it's all squibs. Absolutely. He kills all the Atifa, but then he goes in and he kills, he kills the entire uh, humanities department. <laughs> right. <laughs> the only professors left standing are STEM. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and business professors. And that's why you They all line code. up to give him a big high five at the end. <laughs> if any of you here are studying anything at Rice or U of H other than STEM, you're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> So, Noah's the hero once again. He gets the girl back. His family apologizes to him. uh, And they're like, Noah, you know what? If you want to join the Navy and then flip houses afterwards, like you were talking about, you can do it. And, you know, the mom, uh, she's like, Noah, I feel so bad. I never listened to you. 
how can I make this up to you? And Noah goes, you know what? There actually is a way. You could come to church with me. <laughs> the family is now Christian. And they're in church, and it's sort of reminiscent of the final scene of Return of the King or The La uh, Last Jedi or whatever. Star the Wars. Wars. <laughs> Star Wars. You know what I'm talking about. Where it's, you know, it's a metal scene. Everyone's there. Boosie's there. Dan Bongino. Uh... <laughs> Uh, the, the guys who were investigating Fusion GPS for Trump. They're all at Lakewood Church with Joel Osteen. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. The Kyle Rittenhouse. They're all there. They're all there as Noah is getting a medal pinned on him by Joel Osteen. And we, it's the end, maybe, but then the credits roll. Credits are done. They're not very long because we didn't hire union labor. Uh, we don't have to put names in there. End credit scene, the uncles, their radar, their angel radar picks up. They've got another nephew out there. You have a franchise. The secret, the secret uncles extended universe. Ho hopefully you guys make enough money on this that the second nephew is Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> Yes, oh, I would just. I would. The second nephew. I would. The, the second nephew. <laughs> I would love to teach Brazilian jiu-jitsu to a Timothy Chalamet with green hair. He's like <laughs> a social media manager who really like wants to stick it to Antifa. <laughs> so yeah, that's our that's our movie. That's our movie script. Yeah. And I think all of our performers on stage. Let's take a bow for everyone here tonight. Let's do it up. All right, ah, shit. I ain't doing it. White Oak, Houston, and the entire state of Texas. We are Chapo Trap House. They are Pendejo time. You guys have been awesome. We're out. The Love city you guys. where I'm from, Cheers. motherfuckers. Stick around. We're signing posters afterwards. We'll be out there in just a few minutes.